Um, so today I want to talk to you guys about using humor and using comedy to build social awareness. So let's see. <laughs> this clicker is awesome. Um, so how do we use humor to build social awareness? And also why, right? Uh, a lot of us here do uh, a lot of great work to build awareness and social change, um, but I'm just maybe suggesting some other ways that we can do that, um, different approaches to reaching people and changing minds. So a little bit about me. Um, I moved to Chicago after high school um, to pursue comedy uh, in all its forms, improv, sketch, and writing. Um, spent five years there, got really tired, graduated when the economy crashed. So before I knew it, I found myself in project management and digital production for agencies throughout New York. Um, that proved to be fortuitous, um, but I'll save that for later because I was still doing comedy at night, just kind of wondering, floundering a little bit, wondering what my voice was and how this all kind of connected. Um, so I just kept on writing and writing and writing and writing and writing and writing to no avail. Um, but the thing is, comedy was still at the core of everything I was doing. I just really wasn't using it right. Um, kind of like a lot of things we do in our 20s. We, we know what we want to do, but not really how to do it. Um, so, yeah, I, I sucked at it. Um, <laughs> but one core thing, and this harkens back to the talk on improv yesterday, uh, was that the truth itself is funny. If we're asking about like, what makes us laugh down to the most simple joke to an elaborate satire, um, the truth is what's funny. And it's honest discovery, observation, and reaction. Um, it always comes, just always works better and reaches people better than something that feels contrived and inauthentic. We've talked about authenticity a lot over the past couple of days. Um, it's a buzzword, but really, um, if you always, if you're doing work and you go back and you say like, what am I trying to say? And what that thing is does not actually say what you're trying to say. Go back. Make sure that what's in your head actually m matches what's on paper. So um, aside from comedy, I really had to ask myself, what are my truths? What are the problems that I see in the world that kind of have reached me or touched me or irked me? And maybe from there I can go about fixing them. So I had some problems with the way that the media talked down to women, uh, the way that women specifically were marketed to in a different way than men. Um, probably since I was a kid, I was always kind of weirded out by the like, way that Oprah became a business uh, to kind of just prey on people's insecurities and things like that. I don't want to get too deep. In, it's not really Oprah's fault, right? Um, it's just kind of the world that was built around the idea of Oprah. Um, and as I was doing comedy, I noticed a huge gender and racial and cultural imbalance in a lot of the writers' rooms that led to uh, any theater, really, just producing the same kind of content over and over again. And we saw that really just throughout television in the past 40 years and how that's starting to change now. Um, queer issues, of course, as a queer woman. Um, basically, uh, queer and trans issues were always uh, something that I focused on in my life. Um, and then also, um, because I've just been a writer this whole time, uh, the rising level and danger of clickbait that we saw in this election, um, compromising what we once knew as journalistic integrity. So all of these things were kind of swimming around in my mind and um, my soon-to-be business partner's mind as well. So she came to me with this idea to start, I don't know, a fake women's magazine. You know, kind of like The Onion, but meets Cosmo. And I was like, we have to do this. Um, and we Googled and Googled and Googled, and nobody had actually made a satirical women's magazine in earnest um, with any degree of commitment. So we made Reductress um, in 2013, and it was uh, designed to really just be a satirical women's magazine to critique not only uh, the way that the women's the way that women's media talks down to women, but also create a new space to talk about, to make content for women, about women, and more or less by women. Um, we do have some male writers, and that's totally cool, too. Um, so we started writing. Um, before we um, launched, we wrote like 50 articles. Um, it really hit the ground running. Um, and as... 
As time went on, uh, the voice really evolved to um, be more and more political, but in a particular way. Like, we were focusing on <laughs> um, extremely political content, extremely political content. Uh, we were finding things in, um, in our own experience as women in the world uh, that weren't being talked about. Uh, I mean, look at The Onion, and I think we've seen the Area Man headlines on The Onion for years and years and years, um, but there was, it just never even occurred to anyone that like, why was there never an area woman? Um, and just like, how rarely that women were just the subject of an idea uh, in comedy and not just a punchline or, um, you know, playing a, a, a waitress, a mother, a wife. Um, what happens when we put women at the center of a story? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then that. <laughs> so what happens if we do? We have an opportunity to... <laughs> we have an opportunity to discuss um, both the, the problems in the environment the, of the patriarchy uh, with women entering the workplace, but also to have a sense of humor about just being a woman as well. Um, and coming from a place of love, not from a place of like, women suck, and this is what's wrong with you. Um, that's no fun. So the mission of Reductors is to take on the outdated perspectives and that condescending tone of the women's media. And we have not only done that through uh, the website from the headlines that you've seen there, We've done fake ads, like baloney for her. Um, we have a podcast called Mouth Time. Um, and um, we're working on some really exciting video as well. Um, we're partnering with Funny or Die to do something for the 2018 elections to focus on um, the less uh, observable issues and challenges about being a woman running for office. But we're going to do it in a funny way, because that's what we do. And there's a lot of really absurd uh, things that you wouldn't even realize are uh, a barrier to entry uh, being a woman running for office. So there's a lot of ways that we've kind of expanded our vision and our thesis statement to any arm of the media that really makes sense. So back to Oprah, bless her. Um, what, <laughs> what Oprah did for women's media, we want to do for women's satire, to have an opportunity to build awareness in any way that we can. Um, we undermine and critique the media by taking on its own voice, obviously, but at the core of what we do, we're really just trying to show uh, the problems, the challenges, and the funny parts of being a woman. Um, so as we launched, we discovered a few other things. Obviously, there was a lack of women-centric content, like we said. Um, there really wasn't enough humor devoted to women period. Like, there was just this giant hole that wasn't being filled. Um, and it didn't seem like people saw it as an issue as much, um, because there were the kind of token Tina Fey's, Amy Poehler's in the world. It's like, well, we fixed comedy. But if you look in any writer's room today, there's still um, a token woman, uh, like a token any kind of diversity. There's just like token this, token that, and really not a, a real representation of the world around us in these rooms that are creating the entertainment that we all consume, and thus the cycle continues. Um, so yeah, <laughs> here's some obvious examples of all of the people that we've revered and were my inspirations growing up, but unfortunately they were all men or male-focused. Um, so that's our problem, right? How do we fix it? Um, well, first, a little bit more on the problem. Um, it seems obvious, but a problem isn't a problem until someone identifies it. And the people who have control of the media have the power to identify the problem. Thankfully, now we have social media, we have the internet, so that we can identify these problems and, uh, and give rise to a, a social movement um, and subvert that power structure. But Really, there's been all of these small problems, these hidden issues that we haven't had language for in our lives, and we've maybe passively waited for someone else to identify the problem. But I just want to say right now, everyone in this room has the power and the ability to identify problems in that maybe stem from their personal life or the experiences of them around them, and to do something about it. Um, so all that said, that's kind of our low-key mission here, is to find all of those small things, right down to the microaggressions in the office, really, really specifically, um, and use comedy 
in order to just shed some light on them and show that they exist and maybe give some language to the problem and the subject if we can, too. Um, yes. Yeah. So awareness is the first step to really having impact. Um, when people ask, like, well, are you really trying to change the world by what you do? Yes and no. Um, I don't expect the headlines that we have on Reductress to literally change what people do, but if we can change one person's mind and say, oh, I didn't know that that was a thing until I saw a headline about it, um, then you know, I think that that's, that's a, a pretty good goal. So how do we address a social, a social issue? Um, we've got to identify the problem. Uh, we've got to articulate the complexities of the problem. And I'll show you exactly how we're going to do that um, with a few headlines coming up. And we're going to build awareness around it through an authentic perspective, like I said, and with authority. And that's the thing that sat satire really uh, affords for what we do specifically, is that uh, we are presenting a reality in a way that is not subject to, uh, to question. Um, Obviously, that's with think pieces, and you can have a conversation around the, the flaws and what's good and wrong about it, but we're just presenting something as is and not as a question. It is just a statement. So um, what happened last August in 2016, there was a, um, a man in the comedy community was uh, kind of ousted from the Upright Citizens Brigade, a theater in New York, because he had raped several women and assaulted many, many others. Um, and what happened after that was very interesting, because there was a lot of uh, discussion in the community about why he was kicked out. A lot of men were defending him, saying that we needed evidence. Um, why didn't the women go to the police? They did. Um, it really, this one event really caused uh, a lot of people's deep-seated beliefs, problematic beliefs about rape culture, to flourish on social media uh, for everyone to see. So a lot of people in my office were really deeply and personally affected by the discussion that was going on within the community. And uh, when we put out a call for pitches on, on just the subject of rape culture, we got like hundreds of pitches from our contrib contributors. Um, and we decided just to do a homepage takeover of uh, entirely headlines devoted to the subject of rape culture, because rape culture isn't just one thing, right? There are so many little parts to it um, that really deserved some discussion, warranted some discussion. So just for example, chill ways to just sort of live with it. Um, this brave man hates social media witch hunts so much he decided to start his own. Um, most women lie about rape, says man lying about rape. Um, and let me tell you what an actual witch hunt looks like from the point of view of an actual witch. So um, this got some really good attention um, because I guess it just spoke to people in a way that I don't even think in the office we knew uh, how much it would speak to people. It was definitely true to us, and it was so true to us that we really probably wouldn't have been productive workers if we did anything else that day, because if we just had to do this. Um, and people really responded well. And a lot of people, men and women both, were like, I didn't really even think about it that way. I didn't think about rape culture in terms of you know, how we def always defend men over women and just subtle nuances that really weren't uh, being part of the discussion. And why? I think there are a lot of people who are a little bit afraid of talking about rape culture, and uh, using satire, using humor, was a way to kind of bridge that fear factor, that discomfort um, that often happens when we talk about really tough subjects. So um, why satire? We're in a time of content overload. We're in, we have so many think pieces going on right now, so much stuff to read, that satire is just a way to kind of disrupt that, uh, disrupt that pattern. And, Present something uh, absurd. You know, present something that's absurd as a, in a way that would seem normal. Um, this is just kind of shorthand for getting people to look at what you're look at what you're trying to say, and then hopefully get something out of it. And if it's done well, I really do think that it can rise above um, your typical think piece that you see on the internet. Um, 
and can reach a lot more people. Um, so how do we do it? Uh, we identify these issues, like I said, that maybe aren't quite hitting mainstream discussion, like microaggressions in the office, um, office air conditioning being historically designed to serve men. Uh, if you didn't know about it, read about it. It's very interesting. Um, diversity in the workplace. And we address these issues in a way uh, that just, just disrupts um, the things that we take for granted in our world. Um, so these aren't issues that should be divisive, right? Like air conditioning. This is all kind of stuff that we can all, once we see the problem, we're like, yeah, this, yeah, this should be fixed. Um, so these are the kind of problems that we're trying to bring up uh, on Reductress in everything that we do. Um, and so here are a few headlines from, um, that are just inspired by, again, these things that we talk about <laughs> in the office all the time. Um, and we're constantly, we constantly have a board of things that are a problem, and when we're inspired, we find ways to make them funny um, and really distill the issue down to as, this, as simple of terms as possible. Um, okay, this might be the one exception, uh, right? This is a com sex work is a complicated issue within the feminist community and, the, and just the world at large. Um, so this headline just uh, kind of encapsulates exactly why um, it's complicated and nobody knows what to think about it. Ah, um, so what's the goal? We're just trying to get more people to engage with issues by approaching it through humor because humor is always just a, one, a easy way to to get people to listen to you. Um, ask, people, ha ask people to see how they might be part of the problem instead of immediately castigating them. Uh, right, like with the, that headline that you saw, um, I can't believe this country is so racist, says all white startup. Um, that was originally pitched as, um, says white male CEO. And while that's perfectly true and real, uh, we specifically want to get everyone to ask themselves how they are part of a problem. Um, and look within themselves and maybe change. Um, not just the white male CEOs, although you guys should change too, but like whatever. Um, try to see an issue through a different lens, um, especially if you are coming from any place of privilege. Um, it's just important to, uh, we try to bring as diverse views as we can uh, to what we write and hopefully that men or white women or anything can just see something from a slightly different perspective than what they're normally given. Um, and then hopefully, like fingers crossed for some of this stuff, um, people are inspired to take action or at least just say something the next time they see something busted in their life. So for takeaways, uh, humor is just a really meaningful and different way to present a problem um, and especially satire. So maybe that's just one other option in addition to uh, other ways of, of creating social change to approach it. Um, awareness is the first step to breeding impact and social change, and that's uh, our bread and butter. And you do have the power to highlight social issues and amplify a call for change. So I hope you guys all do that. Um, and yeah, check out Reductress, and that's it. <laughs>